Hello, my loves, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria, and today we're going to be talking about divine feminine energy. What is divine feminine energy? Well, divine feminine energy, number one, is not confined or contained to anyone's gender identity or sexual orientation. It is and should be applied to every single person because it's an energy, this goddess energy, that lives and breathes within every single one of us. The reason why you want to work on activating this divine feminine energy or lean into this divine feminine energy is because it will allow you to live and breathe a very full life and also be able to give to so many while you're here on earth at the very same time. If you're able to balance your divine feminine with your divine masculine energy, another energy that is present within you, I promise you life will ebb and flow and be easy and effortless. There will be a lasting wonderful impact that it is that you will leave here on earth. So how do you activate this magical, powerful, divine feminine energy? The first thing I want to start off with is the most powerful and the most potent. And it has a lot to do with our self-worth. If you are harboring and holding resentment towards yourself, you will have a very difficult time embracing, leaning into, and trusting your divine feminine energy because you will find that there is this overarching need and desire to prove yourself, to change yourself, or to change the circumstances around you to match an insecurity or a void space that is happening within you. I want to say that so many of us, most of us, do have certain traumas that we carry just by existing on this earth. These traumas can stem from our childhood. They can stem from certain events that have really damaged us or left a lasting impact or a scar on our psyche or on our hearts, on our minds. And from that place, as human beings wired for survival, we try so hard to fix it or to make it better or to prevent that from happening. What ends up happening is that we stay in the space of fight or flight, which is masculine energy in nature. This need to fight out, to protect, to prove, to challenge, instead of divine feminine energy, which is very receptive in nature, nurturing, embracing, vulnerable, soft, and compassionate. If we are not allowing ourselves the space to begin to heal those parts of ourselves that have become fractured from our, our experience and our existence here on earth, it can make leaning into your divine feminine energy that much harder. So how do you heal this? You sit with it, you ask for help, and you work on resolving any underlying self-worth issues that make it impossible for you to let go of control or that keep you in places or have you attracted to go to situations that are proving a point within your subconscious that still needs to be healed. And that's a lot to kind of sit with. So let me just kind of put that in a nice little nutshell, a little nugget for you to take and digest that's easier than all of what it is that I just said. If you don't feel good about yourself, if the feeling is not a natural feeling that you feel good within yourself, you are more than likely, most likely, to find yourself attracted to or engaging with energies that aren't good for you. You'll be too patient with them, you'll sit with them for too long, or you'll put so much energy in them that you're depleting your divine feminine energy. The way to activate your divine feminine is to pursue healing, to confront those aspects within yourself that feel a void, that have experienced abandonment, the parts of yourself that are enraged, and rightfully so. Sit with them, heal them, nurture them. That is the first step to honoring and activating your divine feminine energy. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is ultimately letting go of control. Now this can be a really hard thing to do, especially after what it is that I just mentioned. If there is trauma or a subconscious need to prove yourself or to challenge or to convince or to manipulate a situation to match your own expectations, you're not in alignment with divine feminine energy. There's an imbalance there. Divine feminine energy understands that it can't necessarily change the situations that is happening around you. There's a certain level of acceptance and surrender and seeing something for what it is and just allowing it to be that. 
not only is this protective of the person or the situation or the circumstance, but it is very protective and honors you and your divine feminine energy. This is also where self-worth starts to fold back into the situation again, because if you don't have a healthy sense of self-worth or you need to feel validated or you're chasing after things to prove your existence or prove your worth or prove that you're worthy of love or whatever the case is, you'll find yourself constantly needing to pull yourself out of divine feminine energy and go into masculine, like a toxic masculine and try to change the situation or flip back into divine feminine energy, the toxic trait of that and start to manipulate the situation. Your divine feminine energy, when it is full and being embraced and embodied and you're living and breathing in it, you're in a place where you don't need to change anything or anyone, you don't need to change yourself. You can just show up as you are, you can allow the situation to just be what it is, and in that space, you feel like you are thriving. You're able to thrive, you're able to relax, you're able to have peace, you're able to have joy. Now, for some of you, you're going to immediately say, well, Jess, my relationship is trash, or Jess, my situation is awful, and I honor that, I acknowledge that. I want to set the intention that you don't stay in a space for too long, or that moving forward after this video, you won't be in places that are toxic or damaging or do not allow you to relax, to be at ease. Sit with yourself for a moment now and really feel the energy, another divine feminine trait. Really feel the energy of the space. If you feel safe here, if you feel loved and accepted for who you are, then you are absolutely in the right place for thriving to happen and to occur. I understand that there are some circumstances that we ultimately can't change. And for that reason, I acknowledge that. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about sacred spaces. But for the most part, if you can move to the places that match how you feel about yourself, you give yourself ample space, the luxury, the gift to be able to relax and be at ease. And honestly, I feel like every single one of us deserves that. I don't want you to look at the condition of the world and how certain societies or a bunch of societies move that is toxic and abrasive to divine feminine, divine masculine, just human beings in general and apply that to yourself. You don't have to be like the rest of the world. You can set a certain standard for yourself by not engaging or entangling in situations, circumstances, relationships, or lifestyles that aren't conducive or supportive to a healthy and thriving you. You do have the power, I hope, to some extent to pick yourself up and to remove yourself out of a situation that is not good for you. And that absolutely includes relationships. It's very easy if divine feminine energy has been wounded or the self-worth has been wounded to stay in places to try to convince someone to love you or accept you or see you as beautiful to stay in that space for too long to try to change it to manipulate it to convince yourself of something that you don't believe within yourself and that's why i felt it was so important to start off with self-worth and self-value first because from that it trickles it has a trickle effect if the root is damaged or sick, we want to heal the root so that what grows from that space is something that is healthy, nurturing, and thriving. Another way to activate your divine feminine energy is to lean and trust fall big time into your intuition, into your emotive feelings. Now those are two separate things and I really have noticed on the internet, especially in the spirituality community, there is confusion when it comes to the word feelings. I'm going to say it's because in the English language, we don't have enough words to express the differences between certain energies. So for that reason, I'm going to create a defined line between intuitive feelings and emotional feelings. They are very, very different. So if you hear me constantly referring to feelings, I'm going to clarify exactly what it is I'm talking about because they are two separate things and will take you down two separate paths. Divine feminine energy has to lean into both of those feelings. The intuitive feelings is that hunch, that feeling that it is that you get in your gut, base level, minimal. So some of you guys are like, well, 
I, I have this intuitive feeling, I have this intuitive vibe, but it is that I don't trust. I understand that. It takes time to develop that, and the way to develop that is to continue to honor it, to trust it, to follow it, to allow it to lead you. Your intuition is something that we all have. It's just a matter of respecting it, giving it space, honoring it, listening to it, and also capturing it because that makes it easier for you to find and follow it again and again and again. On the flip side of that, we have our emotional feelings, and those are very different than intuitive feelings. Sometimes, oftentimes, your intuitive feelings and your emotional feelings will butt heads. Your emotional feelings describe or reflect the internal temperature of your body, right? So let's say someone pisses you off your emotional feelings can surge up because you're offended, you're quick to react, you wanna rage, you wanna fight, you wanna cry. Those are emotional feelings. Your intuitive feelings may see the fact that you're emotional, but internally sense that even though I'm hurt right now, I know it wasn't intentional. Do you know what I mean? Your intuitive feelings will allow you to understand the environment your emotional feelings reflect the environment, what's going on within you. So there are two very separate things. Divine feminine energy will work with and embrace both of those distinguishing sets of feelings. <laughs> I hope you guys are following along with me because this is, I don't wanna say tough to talk about, but I don't think we talk about it enough. I thrive in like thoroughness and clarity and I'm trying to over deliver. <laughs> I'm trying to over deliver to make sure that you're able to receive what it is that I'm saying right now and that you're able to understand because it can be tricky and watch in any other video or any other moment, even when you're talking, even when you yourself are talking or when I'm talking, you will say the word feelings and there's almost like, wait, which feelings are we talking about? Because if we are moving from our emotional feelings all the time, that can lead to trouble versus if we're moving from our intuitive feelings, it can allow us to rise above the circumstances, rise above the situation and keep the vibration high. And that's not to say that your emotional feelings are toxic, are bad. It's just they reflect, again, what's going on within you. And Divine Feminine, it's absolutely important for us to listen, to respect, and to respond also to our emotional feelings by giving ourselves the space to feel it. And this has a lot to do with surrender and acceptance and not needing to control. Have you noticed in yourself or in others where you, you'll feel this surge of emotion because something is triggering you to feel and you try to swallow it, you try to hold it back, you try to not cry or not, whatever the case is because it's not the appropriate location, it's not the right time. That right there is an energy that can stop, block, halt divine feminine energy because there's a reason why you are feeling those feelings. They still need the space to fully express themselves. I understand that the grocery store is not the right place to have a complete meltdown. I would put a pin in that, I would remove myself, put myself in a, in a place where it is safe for me to revisit those feelings and completely allow them to flow out. That is healthy and that is the best way to work with divine feminine energy, to activate it even greatly versus you feeling your feelings, pushing them down, pretending they don't exist or distracting yourself through action or through whatever in order to try to protect yourself or stop yourself from feeling your feels. Divine Feminine says, this is how I'm feeling today. This is how I'm feeling in this moment. Just like the waves of the ocean that will come in, it'll go out. I honor it. I give space for it. It is sacred. It is right. At the same time, honoring your intuitive feelings will not only lead you, again, from a higher perspective, but it will give a lot of clarity into your emotional feelings, right? So your emotions will be bubbling up and brewing and can really be a roller coaster of a ride. They're also very temporary. Even as divine feminine, as you're feeling all your feels, you don't want to allow your emotional feelings to lead the way. You want them to be what it is that they're meant to be, which is an outlet of internal expression. When it comes to decision making, when it comes to what it is that you decide to do or not do, let that be from your intuitive feelings after you sit with yourself you settle, you accept the situation, you ask the divine, or you ask your guides, or you ask your higher self, in this situation, what is it that I need to do next? And that leads me to the next thing, which is there's no need to rush with divine feminine energy, absolutely 
no need to rush and react. Having a state of calmness at all times is not realistic and it's also not healthy. That would not be normal. Having said that, even as you're feeling all of your feelings, understand that it's normal and that you don't need to jump in, dive in, chase something or act upon those feelings. You are allowed to let them flow in, let them flow out, just like your lungs breathe in air, exhale air. You allow yourself to feel it, let it go, and in that moment, you know that you don't need to jump on something, react to anything, chase anything down. It's just a moment that is revealing to you the magic of what is happening within you. If you find yourself immediately reacting and jumping on things, this is an imbalance that's happening within you where you're leaning into your emotional feelings as a call to act instead of your intuitive feelings as the ability to be guided and led. I hope this makes sense. I'm gonna share one last point before we go into more action related steps when it comes to activating or embodying divine feminine energy. So just bear with me, hang on there. Thank you so much for watching and listening so far. I know sometimes it can be a little monotonous or long winded as I am known to be, but there's just one final point that I think is very important and it's the energy of leaning into empathy. This can be really tricky because if you are staying in a space of fight or flight for too long, if you are in a place where you have to be on survival mode, where you can't be vulnerable, you can't let your guard down, to be an empathetic person is almost unfair to ask of someone. and. For many of you guys, you'll probably hear me say that and be like, what, how? Like, it doesn't hurt to be nice. It shouldn't be hard to care or to show up for others. But the truth is, is that we live in a, a society that is toxic in nature. For many of us, we live in societies that are toxic in nature. So to be empathetic is to pull from a place that may already be completely depleted, that may be completely void of even receiving empathy for yourself because you have to protect yourself and that can be very exhausting. So I want to challenge you to not automatically assume that to be empathetic towards others is gonna be something that is completely natural because one thing that I've noticed in divine feminine energy is that sometimes we connect being empathetic with being nice and being nice is not a reflection of divine feminine energy. It, it, it simply isn't. Being nice can oftentimes relate to having a lack of boundaries, to not being able to fully express yourself or speak up for yourself, not being an advocate for yourself, allowing yourself to be run down or run through or damaged. Being nice through divine feminine energy is not, it can do more harm than good. Sometimes it's not that people are trying to take advantage of you or hurt you, it's just that there's this expectation that you must be there nurturing and supporting others. And sometimes, oftentimes, that is not your place. So I do wanna say that being empathetic is very important, but being able to, to assess where you're at, at this moment in your life, and being able to pour into yourself will allow you to receive ample energy and ample nourishment so that being empathetic towards others and being empathetic towards yourself is something that flows easily and effortless and doesn't take anything out of you. If you feel that you are not feeling connected to others, to humanity, to yourself, this is a telltale sign that divine feminine energy has been depleted, is exhausted, has been taken advantage of, and needs to be restored as soon as possible. And now that leads me to the action steps as that you can take in order to fill your cup up and continue to nourish divine feminine energy. Or maybe I should put this in another video. I think I might do just that. All right guys, well thank you so much for hanging out with me. I do want to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. If you have any questions about Divine Feminine or any other topics that is that you wish to talk about outside of action steps that you can take in order to fulfill and nourish your Divine Feminine energy, please let me know down in the comments or you can leave me an email at info at bahadilife.com. Also, feel free to check me out at Bahati Life Apothecary, bahadilife.com. That's where I work my magic. I set intentions, do all those wonderful things that I'm known for. 
Until then, I will see you guys in my next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.